Thank you so much for the canvas. Thank you so much for your welcome. I'm very proud to be here. So it is, uh, as usual, drawings, drawings about the Hyatt area. And you can run the video, please. Perhaps I can do that by myself now. Before, before my talk, I just want to invite everybody you are most than welcome in Paris in June for the European Hania Society Congress that I'm organizing. And since I am here today, we just create a, a discount, 25% for all Indian peoples and other countries. So you have from today, during 10 days, to go to the website and to have this discount only for you. So let's go for the anatomical understanding of the hiatal area and the osteogastrophagial reflux. We will do that with drawings. This is an anterior view. You can see here the xiphoid process, the costal margin, the lateral edge of the abdomen, anterior and superior iliac spine. This is the inguinal ligament and the thigh. On this introduction, we will draw, of course, the diaphragm. We need the diaphragm for this listen here, and then the esophagus. We can find three centimeters of esophagus inside the abdomen, and then here the stomach until the pylorus. The esophageal hiatus projecting at T10, the 10 um, thoracic vertebrae, and the pylorus is projecting at L1, the first lumbar vertebra. In fact, this esogastric junction is not only one junction, but is five junctions. First, it is an anatomical junction, okay, between the esophagus and the stomach. But second, it is a mucus junction between, there is, is the Z line, Z line between the two uh, epitheliomas. The third junction will be an arterial junction because we will find here anastomosis between the superior esophageal artery uh, reaching the artery from the left gastric artery. The fourth will be a venous junction. We will find here veins coming from the left gastric vein and anastomosis with the inferior esophagus veins. So here it is a portal caval anastomosis explaining the risk of esophageal varices. The fifth junction will be a pressure junction between the positive pressure of the abdomen and the negative pressure of the thorax. So it is a pressure junction. As you can see, it is a very complex anatomy, but we will find here a very common disease, the reflux. And we will explain with the anatomy, the continence factors of this reflux uh, on this esogastric junction. So we will first draw um, the stomach and the esophagus and we will perform a frontal slice. And we will find here the esophagus, which has two types of muscular layers. Two types of muscular layers in the esophagus and three types of muscular layers in the stomach. We will find this outer longitudinal muscular layer in the esophagus and the same name, outer longitudinal muscular layer in the stomach. They are, of course, in continuity. And I am cutting here this outer longitudinal muscular layers. As you know, the, the, the stomach is a strong muscular structure answering the first step of the digestion. So this outer muscular layer is cut here. And with this drawing, we will show the fourth 
system of consonance against the reflux. So this is the stomach. And then we will draw the second layer, the second muscular layer in the oesophagus. So it's colorization, you know, I take my time. Here is the pillars. Okay, the second layer, the second muscular layer will be here, called inner circular muscular layer of the oesophagus. And this layer will form the inferior oesophageal sphincter, which is the first continence factor. And this inner circular muscular layer will be in continuity with the middle circular layer of the stomach. And we will cut here this layer, so the inner circular muscular layer of the oesophagus, forming the inferior oesophageal sphincter, in continuity with the middle circular layer of the stomach here. This layer is cut like this, in the good direction, like this. And then we will find the third muscular layer of the stomach. And this third muscular layer of the stomach will be called the inner oblique muscular layer. And this muscular layer is forming a sling surrounding the esophagastric junction. And it is also a continence factor against the reflux. This layer has a name. It's called the collar of Helvetius, forming a loop of gastric muscle around the oesogastric junction. This is this layer. I will cut here to show what happened behind. This is the collar of Helvetius. Then we will find, of course, the mucosa layer. This mucosa layer with two types of epitheliomas. And this muscular mucosa layer will have folds. And we will find very small folds for the oesophagus, but we will find large gastric mucosal folds in the stomach, and in particular, a very voluminous gastric mucosal fold around the angle of his, which is called the valve of Gubarov, and participating also against the reflux. It is a continence factor. So to summarize, four continence factors here. The angle of his, is of course a continence factor. The inferior oesophageal sphincter is the second continence factor against the reflux here. The collar of Helvetius, of course, with this inner circular muscular layer of the stomach, is the third. And the fourth with B will be the valve of Gubarov, which is a voluminous gastric fold. Of course, again, here is the Z line between the two types of epitheliomas. Interestingly, if we perform a sleeve gastrectomy, it will affect the continence factor and lead to reflux because the angle of is will be destroyed, as well as the collar of Helvetius and the valve of Gubarov. And in France, in case of reflux, is not permitted to perform a sleeve gastrectomy due to this anatomy. The last drawing will be a big anterior view to explain all the junctions and the fifth continence factor. This is the spine from the ninth thoracic vertebra until the 
third lumbar vertebra. This is the transversus processes of the lumbar vertebrae. The last ribs, this is the 12th, the 11th ribs, and the 10th, which is cut here. And there we will find the fibrous pillars, which is called the median arcuate ligaments of the diaphragm, and laterally the medial, the lateral arcuate ligament, and the ligament of senac laterally. These are the posterior attachment of the diaphragm. This is the diaphragm with the muscular part. We will find lateral costal part and the medial spinal part of this diaphragm. Like this. At T12, this is the aorta hiatus here, the abdominal aorta, which is cut on this level. Like this. Laterally, we will find the psoas muscle with the inserting on the vertebrae and the transversus processes. Laterally, the quadratus lumbarum muscle. This is the posterior abdominal wall. Laterally, the transversus abdominis muscle with the aponeurotic part, the muscular part of this transversus abdominis muscle. The fibers are horizontal, of course, transversal. This is the posterior abdominal wall. At T10, we will find the esophageal hiatus with the muscular part of the diaphragm, the cruise, right and left cruise, forming the esophageal hiatus at T10. This is the central tendon of the diaphragm, just here. And at T9, it will be open. It is the vena cava hiatus. And we will find here the vena cava, reaching the abdomen at T9 and receiving the hepatic veins, like this, the three hepatic veins. So the first branches of the aorta are the phrenic arteries. And we will find the right and left phrenic arteries as well as the phrenic veins reaching the inferior vena cava. Here are the left and right phrenic veins. So this is the esophagus, again, three centimeters inside the abdomen, and the esophageal junction here, esogastric junction. This is the stomach, and we will cut the stomach on this level. And we will explain the anatomy of the esogastric junction very precisely. The stomach is cut here. So these are the arterial junction. These are the inferior esophageal arteries. And we will find anastomosis with esophageal branches coming from the phrenic arteries. And we will find anastomosis with esophageal branches coming from the left gastric artery. This is the left gastric artery and esophageal branches here. And of course, this is the celiac trunk, common hepatic artery, phrenic artery. And as you can see, the esophageal junction is very rich about arteries with three types of arteries with an anastomosis here. The veins are very, very important. This is the inferior esophageal veins. And of course, they are part of the azygous system. And we will find also esophageal veins going to the phrenic veins. This is the caval system. And then we will find the portal system because we will find the left gastric vein reaching the portal vein. This is the portal vein. 
superior mesenteric, inferior mesenteric vein, and the left gastric vein and the right gastric vein reaching the portal vein. It is the portal system. So in the junction, we will find an astomosis of caval azicosis and portal system. It is a portosystemic anastomosis explaining the risk of esophageal varices. Of course, here also there are the, the, the nerve, right and left vague nerves on this area. So the fifth continence factor here are, of course, the muscular pillars, the crews, right and left crews of the diaphragm. So to summarize, in case of hiatal hernia, what happened in case of hiatal hernia? All the continence factor will be affected. We will find a modification of the angle of his, modification of the uh, inferior esophageal sphincter. We will find modification of the collar of Helvetius and modification of the valve of Gubarov. We will find modification of the crus esophageal hiatus and of course modification in the pressions between uh, the thorax and the abdomen. This is the explication of the reflux and sometimes it needs surgical correction. So I hope you enjoyed these new drawings. And thank you very much.